In the bodybuilding world, junk volume refers to any training you do that takes up time and energy, but has no actual benefit in terms of muscle or strength gain. So it's basically exactly what it sounds like. Volume is the amount of work, or simply the number of hard sets that you do, and junk is garbage. It's not actually worth anything. And as we'll see, I think the scientific evidence is pretty clear in showing that junk volume is a real phenomenon, and I personally think it's holding many trainees back from getting the gains that they want. So let's take a look at the three most common types of junk volume and how we can avoid all three. The first example we'll cover is excessive volume per workout. So let's say you're training your chest with a flat dumbbell press. After a quick warm up, you'll do your first working set for eight to 10 reps, and it's a hard set within one or two reps of failure. Now, because the muscle is being stretched and shortened under load with control, it'll no doubt generate a high amount of mechanical tension within the pec. So obviously, this set will be very effective at stimulating muscle growth, and it falls under the umbrella of what we'd call effective volume. It's definitely not junk volume. And if, instead of one set like this, you did two sets, both of those sets would be effective at stimulating growth. And if you did three sets, the third set would be effective as well. But what if you did 10 sets? Would all 10 of those sets be equally effective at stimulating muscle growth? Would you expect to see 10 times the growth if you did 10 times the sets? Or would the stimulus per set eventually diminish to the point that we might as well just call them wasted sets? Junk volume. Well, I think it's obvious that your return per set will diminish, but at what point does it become junk? Is it after three sets per body part? 10 sets? 20 sets? How many sets in a single workout can we do before we're just wasting our time, energy, and ability to recover? Let's take a look at this comprehensive in-house meta-analysis from James Krieger, which pulled the results of nine separate studies looking at the impact of adding sets on hypertrophy. As you can see in the graph here, up to around six sets per muscle, we see a pretty clear benefit in terms of muscle growth, but once you go above six sets, you hit a pretty hard plateau and maybe even regress a bit. Now, I wanna be clear, in previous videos, I've talked about weekly volumes, and I've said that roughly 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week is usually the sweet spot. And I still think that's true. However, in this video, I'm talking about volume per muscle per day. How much volume should you do in a single workout to maximize muscle growth? So going back to our chest example, sure, you could do 10, 12, 14 sets for your chest in a single workout, but those extra sets beyond six to eight probably aren't doing much to help grow your chest. And at a certain point, they could be counterproductive because now your chest is gonna have a harder time recovering from all that volume. Now, of course, all six of those sets don't have to be on the same exercise. So for example, you could do three sets of flat dumbbell press, then three sets of incline cable flies, but to then go and do another three sets of machine presses and then another three sets of push-ups, some of those sets are most likely gonna be falling into the junk territory for most people. And if you feel like you really need that much chest volume in order to keep progressing, you'd be better off either splitting those extra sets out into separate workouts or maybe you don't actually need as much volume as you think you do. And you'd be better off keeping your volume the same and instead focusing on other variables like your technique, execution, and effort per set. Now, before we go any further, I need to make a few important caveats. First, if you look at Krieger's volume graph, you'll notice that there's a lot of variance in the data. This means that for any given volume, there's a big range in terms of muscle growth for different studies and in different individuals. This line is simply reporting the average trend. So on average, most people won't get more gains out of doing more than six sets for a muscle in a single workout. But no doubt, some of you watching this video have volume curves that look something more like this. And you might not run into junk volume until you reach 10 or 12 sets, and possibly more. So this trend line should be your starting place, and then you'll wanna adjust the numbers up or down as you assess your own progress and recovery. I also think your volume needs depend on how much you train to failure. If you push each and every set to absolute failure, your volume cap will be lower. So to be clear, the six set figure that I'm suggesting here assumes that you're not taking every set to true failure, but you are getting pretty close. So it means six hard working sets close to failure within a single muscle in a single workout. If you're regularly going well above this, you might not be pushing those sets as hard as you think you are, or you might be wasting time and energy on junk volume. I should also say that if you're doing less than six sets per muscle per workout, that's perfectly fine as long as your total weekly volume is sufficient. So for example, for the biceps, you could do three to four sets of different curl variations on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then that would add up to be 10 effective weekly sets, which is solid. So six sets should be seen as an upper threshold per workout, not a minimum threshold that you need to hit every time you train a muscle. 
I also think these numbers differ depending on body part. Based on my coaching experience, some body parts really do seem to tolerate and benefit more from higher volumes. For example, I think the back, glutes, and quads usually grow better with more sets. So I would speculate that the average per session effective volume might be closer to 10 to 12 sets for those muscles and closer to six to eight sets for everything else. And this is part of the reason why I still think the traditional bro split will be suboptimal for most people. If you do 20 sets for your chest on your Monday chest day, at least half of that volume is pretty much junk for most people. I'm not saying it's doing nothing, but I really doubt it'll make a noticeable difference. On the other hand, if you instead do 10 sets for your chest on Monday's upper body day, and then 10 sets for chest on Thursday's upper body day, suddenly you've cut down on your junk sets, and I do think that approach would result in better progress. Now, I should mention that the latest research does show that bro splits still work just fine as long as weekly volume is matched. However, I think that if you're trying to go from the intermediate to advanced stage, or from the advanced to elite stage, most people won't be able to get there as efficiently on a bro split because to keep driving progress upward, you're gonna need to bump your weekly volume up. And if you try to stack all those extra sets on one day, they just start to look more junky eventually. At that point, it just makes sense to distribute your sets more evenly throughout the week, whether that be through an upper lower, push pull legs, full body, or some hybrid split. All right, the next type of junk volume that I wanna look at is easy sets. And I do think this is the most common and most pernicious type of junk volume that there is, at least in commercial gyms and with more casual lifters. Research shows that when people are left to their own devices, most lifters don't train hard enough to maximize muscle growth past the newbie phase. In this study, people were asked to pick a weight they'd normally do for 10 reps on the bench press. And then the researchers had them actually do it for as many reps as they possibly could. Only 22% of people got 10 to 12 reps, which I'd argue is about where you wanna to be to maximize muscle growth. Only 22% were actually there. 31% got 13 to 15 reps, so they'd be leaving about three to five reps in the tank. Not horrendously easy, this will still build muscle, but if this type of volume dominates your routine, you might have a hard time getting past the beginner to early intermediate stage. I personally wouldn't call this junk volume because it is still worth something, especially if you're doing multiple sets. However, the 47% of people who got 16 to 20 plus reps with their typical 10 rep weight were leaving six to 10 or more reps in the tank, and this is what I'd call junk volume and you'll never get past the intermediate stage training this way. And so for practical purposes, the majority of hypertrophy work should be within zero to three reps from failure. And it'd be smart to take some of those sets all the way to failure, whether you do that on the last set for each muscle, like Dr. Schoenfeld recommends, or on the last week of a mesocycle, like Dr. Isratel recommends. And the last type of junk volume that I wanna quickly mention is ultra high rep sets. So anything upwards of 40 to 50 reps. And similar to so-called easy sets, it isn't that ultra high rep sets don't do anything, they're just far from optimal. Research shows that you can train too light even if you go to failure. And that cutoff seems to be somewhere in the range of 20% of your one rep max. So if you're regularly doing sets in the range of 50 plus reps, you'd be a lot better off simply increasing the weight and getting down below 30 reps or so. Apart from this, I think the biggest downside of ultra high rep work is that it creates a huge recovery demand for no added hypertrophic stimulus. It can get you super sore and impair your performance for future workouts and end up compromising your results despite actually working harder. Now, if you guys are interested, I spoke with researcher James Krieger about junk volume over on my podcast, which I'll link down below. I also just launched the final 10 week installment of my power building series, which you can learn more about over on jeffnipper.com. And before we go, I wanna give a shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a huge online community that has thousands of classes for creative people looking to learn new skills like photography, graphic design, web design, music, and even business stuff like marketing and productivity. I actually just got a new camera this week and I'm excited to dig into some new Skillshare courses on video production to help elevate the quality of my channel even more. It doesn't need to be super expensive or elaborate either. For example, this course teaches you how to take and edit amazing photos using only an iPhone, which I'll still use to take photos for my Instagram all the time. With Skillshare, you'll be getting instruction from fellow creatives that teach classes for every skill level from beginner to advanced. So you can learn exactly what you need to know about that skill that you've been wanting to learn. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the first link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Skillshare's classes aren't just videos. They also offer class projects and hands-on feedback with short to the point tutorials so you can easily fit them into a busy schedule. So make sure you're one of the first 1000 people and get a head start on that skill that you're looking to master. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring another video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.